Lightning McQueen is back, and this time he's racing around the world with his best friend Mater in tow in Pixar's Cars 2. Naturally, there are a ton of hidden details and Easter eggs along the way, so let's rev those engines. Cars 2 is a bit of a one-off for the series. Though we're long for the ride as Lightning competes in the World Grand Prix, it's Mater who's in the driver's seat. While Lightning is on the track, Mater stumbles upon an evil scheme that may just put his bestest buddy's life in jeopardy, and it's up to him and his new secret agent friends to crack the case. One such friend is Finn McMissile, voiced by screen veteran Sir Michael Caine. Did you know that McMissile is a hybrid of famous vehicles used by secret agents in classic spy movies and TV shows? His shape was inspired by parts of a Volvo P1800, a BMW 507, as well as James Bond's preferred ride, the Aston Martin DB5. Needless to say, Finn McMissile has a license to spy. Here's another interesting feature of the car. Take a look at the license plate. If you thought I was going to say that his license plate reads A113, the in-joke of Pixar animators who learned their trade in the classroom A113 at the California Institute of the Arts, well, you'd be wrong! Finn McMissile's license plate reads 314 FMCM. March 14th just so happens to be Michael Caine's birthday. As for FMCM, it obviously stands for Finn McMissile. What is it with spies in movies always flaunting their identities like celebrities? Aren't they supposed to be masters of disguise? McMissile has been in the spy game a long time. Though he's a fine-oiled machine in tip-top condition, pay close attention to one piece of equipment he has at his disposal. In the opening scene, he uses a spy camera to get a better look at the action on the ocean rig. Did you notice his heads-up display only utilizes simple vector graphics? Top spy gear? Yeah, sure. Maybe for the 60s, he could probably use an upgrade. There's another car in the movie that receives an upgrade, Lightning McQueen. In preparation for the World Grand Prix, McQueen loses the stickers in favor of real operating headlights. The World Grand Prix has Lightning and Mater globetrotting to Tokyo, Japan, Porto Corsa, Italy, and London, England. Like most Pixar movies, Cars 2 was also an international affair, and based on where the film was released, one scene in particular would receive a considerable tune-up. During the cocktail party, Lightning schmoozes with two other professional race cars. Lightning calls one of them Lewis. Lewis is voiced by the British seven-time Formula One champion Lewis Hamilton. His fellow pro driver in the scene, however, could be voiced by one of three different Formula One drivers, depending on where you see the movie. In Spain, Lewis is joined by Fernando Alonso. In Russia, it's Vitaly Petrov. And in Germany, Sebastian Vettel plays Sebastian Schnell. Schnell means quickly in German. And in the US, his rival is credited as Jeff Gorvette, who is of course played by NASCAR legend Jeff Gordon. Another interesting detail regarding Jeff. Jeff Gorvette's racing number was originally supposed to be 3. In the end, it just made sense to change the number to 24. Racing fans know that 24 is Jeff Gordon's real-life number, but they also know that the number 3 has special significance as well. Dale Earnhardt drove with the number 3 on his Chevrolet stock car in the NASCAR circuit from 1975 to 2001. He was a legend in the sport, earning no less than three nicknames because of his aggressive style of driving. The Intimidator, The Man in Black, and Ironhead. In 2001, Earnhardt died in a crash that happened on the last lap of the Daytona 500. That same year after the accident, he was inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Needless to say, it was probably in the best interest of the filmmakers to leave the number three alone. Cameos in Cars 2 don't just come from the racing world. Pay close attention to the boat Finn McMissile hitches a ride on at the beginning of the movie. This is no ordinary boat, but Pixar's replica of the boat Northwestern, which is a name that should be on the radar of reality TV fans. The Discovery Channel follows the dangerous voyages of the Northwestern and its crab fisherman crew on the hit show The Deadliest Catch. Did you also happen to catch the letter on the boat's nose? I, I mean bow? Pun intended, by the way. S, H are the initials for Sig Hansen. Northwestern's captain on Discovery's series, and it just so happens it's his voice you're hearing as the Northwestern as well. His character's name? Krabby. Turns out he's not the only Krabby character in Cars 2. Tensions rise for Lightning as his best buddy Mater's simple ways clash with the sophisticated atmosphere of the Grand Prix. Mater even embarrasses him in front of the host of the event, Miles Axelrod, voiced by stand-up comedian, actor, and activist Eddie Izzard. Did you know that the name Miles Axelrod actually came from one of Eddie Izzard's stand-up shows? Not just any show, but from his comedy special live from Wembley Stadium. In the set, he uses the name Miles Axelrod as a humorous bit about the invention of the wheel. An embarrassing guest is the least of the problems surrounding the tournament. One of the functions of the World Grand Prix is to promote alternate fuel all-in-all, all. but a secret faction known as the Lemons plan to undermine the tournament by making all-in-all all into a dangerous weapon. 
Check out the damage the lemons wreak on the racers during the race in Porto Corsa, Italy. Using electromagnetic pulse emitter disguised as a camera, they cause a pileup on the track. Only two cars avoid being terribly damaged. Of course, those two cars just so happen to be Lewis Hamilton and Jeff Gordon. I mean, Gorvette. The lemons are so shrouded in secrecy, even their boss hides his true identity. Take a look at the evil mastermind's broadcast from a secret garage. He uses a voice modulator and every bit of his exterior is completely covered. But there's still one interesting detail to pull from this shot, especially for Brit mechanics. Did you see the name of the auto parts box? British Wheeland is a play on the name British Leyland, which was a motor company based in the United Kingdom that went belly up after seven years in the biz. The company was notorious for building unreliable cars, which of course are common referred to as lemons. This makes a ton of sense when looking at the different models of cars within the ranks of the infamous order. Grim is an AMC Gremlin, Acer an AMC Pacer, Vladimir Trunkov is a ZAZ Zaporozits, and Professor Z is a Yugo, all cars famous for breaking down in their time. If that's not enough, Pixar decides to hit us over the head with the symbolism. Take a look at the table at their meeting. The centerpieces are all literal pyramids of lemons. Okay, okay, we get it, Pixar. Ish. Food and automobiles merge in a few other fascinating ways. Remember the Wheel Well Motel from the first movie? It's been restored to its former glory by Cars 2, and the place is jumping when Lightning makes his triumphant return after winning his fourth Piston Cup. During McQueen's romantic dinner with Sally, Mater crashes their date by acting as their waiter. Keep an eye on the bar as he goes in to ask Guido to prepare their usual. Did you see that oil can on the far right? The label says Crown Oil, which is a funny little wink at the popular Canadian blended whiskey, Crown Royal. From French Canadian to Paris, France. Don't blink or you'll miss it. Keep your eyes peeled in the sequence when Mater joins Finn and Holly in Paris to track down a black market parts dealer. In the montage of the city, Mater drives by a Michelin star rated restaurant that should look strangely familiar to Pixar fans. Do you remember the name of the restaurant in Pixar's 2007 hit Ratatouille? Gusto's has been modified to fit the Cars universe. Here it's called Gastos. Gas. Toes. Get it? Ha! Come to think of it, Michelin works here too. The restaurant again shows up in the postcard for Paris, in front of the Eiffel Tower during the end credits. Hope you saved room for some pizza! This is Pixar, after all! And what would a Pixar movie be without a special appearance from our favorite delivery service, the Pizza Planet Truck from Toy Story? This time around, we're getting a double helping. If you caught the truck's first appearance, you may just be faster than Mater with a pair of rockets. Back at the Wheelwell Motel, after Mater leaves McQueen and Sally's table, watch the TV over the bar. The split second you see it. The Pizza Planet truck is guest star on a talk show just before the Mel Dorado show. As for the second sighting, I kinda already gave you a hint, but pay attention to the spectators during the final race in Radiator Springs. Once Mater gets his rockets from Finn and Sally, watch closely after he tows Otis into Ramon's body shop. He zings right past the Pizza Planet truck, who just so happens to be parked right next to two more familiar cars, Van and Minnie, the lost tourists from the first film, voiced by character actors Richard Kind and Edie McClurg. Sometimes there's nothing like familiar faces. How about a familiar sound? There's one sound we just can't get enough of around here, and that's the famous Wilhelm scream from 1951's Distant Drums. This time it pops up in the pub, Ye Left Turn In in London. It's a little drowned out, but it can be heard after Lemon's Grim and Acer drop in, courtesy of some fancy flying by Holly Shiftwell. The two careen into the bar, spilling everyone's drinks. From outside the establishment, as a tire comes bouncing out of the pub, Wilhelm can be heard over the commotion. But wait, there's something else of interest in the pub. Of course, it's no secret Pixar likes to inject references to earlier movies in their latest releases, but did you know that sometimes they'll add a little easter egg for a movie that hasn't even been released yet? After the lemons crash into the bar, there's a shot of beer pints comically floating into the air before dropping and spilling all over the disgruntled customers. When they do, a tapestry is revealed high on the wall in the background. Sure, it has cars on it, but it's also Celtic in style. This is the filmmaker's little secret plug for the then-upcoming Pixar release Brave. It depicts Princess Merida and her family only as cars, but in the same position as the tapestry that would later show up in the 2012 release. So what are some other Pixar movie references in Cars 2? First take a look at this scene with Mater and Lightning after their big day together in Radiator Springs. They drive past the Radiator Springs drive-in theater, which you might remember from the post credit sequence in the original Cars. But look at what's playing, the Cars version of The Incredibles, The Incredimobiles. What's more Incredimobile than an explosive fight sequence? The next Pixar movie reference can be found in the fighting scene during the Tokyo race. 
Finn McMissile gets a leg up, uh, a tire up on his adversaries, literally leaping out of their hold, causing one lemon to crash into another whose flamethrower ignites, sending them both flying. Have you caught the reference yet? Here's a hint. It's the sign that caught Acer. Those chopsticks and nut are a fun little play on the sign from the exclusive sushi restaurant in Monsters, Inc., Harryhausen's. Tokyo is the place to be for hidden secrets. This next one is a super hard find. During the travel montage after Lightning and Mater's plane lands in Tokyo, look at the second shot of the city. Pause if you gotta. Check out the pink cube with the character in the white circle. It's a car version of Lotso Huggin' Bear from Toy Story 3. Talk about an indication of things at the World Grand Prix not always being what they seem. Like this old clunker who follows Mater into the bathroom. That disguised Detroit muscle car is Rod Torque Redline, voiced by the debonair Bruce Campbell, known by horror fans everywhere as the overconfident, wisecracking Ash Williams from the Evil Dead series. How can you tell Torques from Detroit? Take a look at his license plate, which reads A113. Haha, <laughs> no, it doesn't. You're still on the lookout for that, aren't you? No, Redline's license plate is from Michigan, and Detroit is considered the home of the American automotive manufacturers. In fact, Rod Redline was inspired by two American cars, the Dodge Challenger and the Ford Mustang. Did you know that Bruce Campbell hails from Birmingham, Michigan? That's just about half an hour outside Detroit. Now back to that license plate. The characters on the plate read M1911A1. Gun enthusiasts will recognize that as a model number for a Colt 45 service pistol, which soldiers in the U.S. Armed Forces used as a standard issue sidearm from 1911 to 1985. The A1 classification of the weapon was adopted in 1924. I guess this means Rod Redline's got some gears and mileage on him. Holly Shiftwell, voiced by Emily Mortimer, just so happens to be a newer model. This diagnostic specialist turned field agent was supposed to rendezvous with Redline, but an Operation Snafu caused her to mistake Mater as her secret American contact. Finn McMissile said it to her best, you kids get all the good hardware, and Holly is all state of the art. We've already established that she can fly. Unlike McMissile, her heads up display is holographic, plus she has a hidden camera and a vast array of secret weapons. She also is responsible for the disguise technology that allows Mater to infiltrate the Lemon's secret meeting incognito. She can even hack into a city's traffic grid and reprogram the stoplights. And hey, wait a minute, you notice something familiar about that? Holly might be up to some old tricks after all. Reprogramming lights was part of Sir Michael Caine's game when he portrayed Charlie Croker, a professional thief whose team reprogrammed the city's traffic lights during a gold heist in the 1969 movie The Italian Job. That movie's also famous for its cars, specifically its Mini Cooper car chase. Another member of the British intelligence team includes the spy jet, Sidley. Listen to Sidley's voice. Whether you know it or not, you've heard that voice before. In fact, it's the same voice that started the whole movie. Both Sidley and Leland Turbo, the spy from the communique at the beginning of the film, are voiced by actor Jason Isaacs. Not familiar with the name? Does Lucius Malfoy from Harry Potter ring a bell? There are a couple of other interesting details involving Sidley. Take a look at the British intelligence seal on the front of the interior cabin. It reads Honor Animus Vis Ecorum, which is Latin for Honor, Spirit, Horsepower. Yep, that's fitting for the Cars universe. Oh, and one more thing, did you happen to catch the number on Sidley's fin? That's right, it's A113. No, really, we mean it this time. In fact, A113 shows up in the cabin as well as part of the image catalog number for the mysterious mastermind behind the lemons. Of course, if you've seen our video for the first Cars movie, then you know that A113 was with us all along on the rusty old license plate attached to our favoriteest tow truck in the whole wide world, Tow Mater. Before there was A113, there were secret Mickeys, designs in the likeness of Mickey Mouse hidden by Disney animators in their cartoons, features, even Disney Park rides. Did you know there's a hidden Mickey in Cars 2? When Lightning and his gang take a pit stop at Luigi's home village on their way to Porto Corsa, we get to meet Luigi's uncle Topolino, the owner of Topolino's tires. So where is the hidden Mickey? It's right there on that awning. And in the name Topolino, in Italian Topolino means baby mouse, and Italians refer to Mickey Mouse as Topolino. By the way, Uncle Topolino and Mama Topolino are played by real-life husband and wife Franco Nero and Vanessa Redgrave. Both are revered performers in their own right. Did you know that Franco Nero was in the original Django? His credits include such actioners as Force 10 from Navarone with Robert Shaw and Harrison Ford, Die Hard 2 with Bruce Willis, and more recently John Wick Chapter 2 with Keanu Reeves. 
Dame Vanessa Redgrave is no slouch either, with a filmography that includes Antonioni's Blow Up, Deep Impact, and Mission Impossible. Some more fun secrets can be found in the Little Italian Village. Take a look at the statue in the fountain in the middle of town. It's holding a trident, but not just any trident, the Maserati logo trident. Also, check out the church facade. Just above the doors is a design in the shape of an iconic Alfa Romeo grille. Talk about automotive works of art. We hope you enjoyed this video and had fun finding new cool secrets and details you might have missed in Cars too. Make sure you subscribe to Movie Logic for more daily movie facts, trivia, and Easter eggs.